Today we cover the topic of a ship's stranding or grounding of the vessel in the shipboard emergency. So we'll talk about the actions to be taken and the considerations should be to be um, mindful of when a ship grounds accidentally. So indications of ship running aground are that the vessel will suffer or experience uh, excessive vibrations which will be felt mostly throughout the length of the vessel. Um, the grounding becomes very dangerous if the stern grounds because then there is a high probability of the propeller and the rudder to get damaged which may also affect the uh, racing of the main engine. Uh, there will be excessive churning of muddy waters because once the vessel grounds and the ship's bottom is touching the seabed, then the ship's uh, sea suction uh, may take in uh, muddy water which is around the ship's hull. The helm will stop responding. The steering will become sluggish and not work at all. It will stop responding to any movements that are provided from the bridge. The vessel will of course not be making way uh, the ship will not show any headway speed. This you can uh, detect by using the transit bearings where the bearing of the vessel will not change. Uh, you will see the relative flow of water against your ship's hull. Uh, you can also use the bearings and distances from fixed objects which will also remain constant. And uh, your position will indicate shallow water through the readings obtained from the echo sounder or the hand led line soundings as well as there could be chances of a ship developing unexpected list. So if you don't know what a hand led line is, hand led line is an alternative way of measuring the depth of the uh, seawater uh, by the use of a rope which is marked at uh, predetermined intervals. The hand led line can also be used to get an indication of what kind of seabed you are on. Actions when the vessel is stranded is that of course as soon as you determine the vessel is stranded you have to sound the general emergency alarm to alert the uh, ship staff if they have not been alerted already through the vibrations that are experienced throughout the length of the vessel. Uh, you have to make sure that you stop the engines and go full astern to see if she responds to the movement. In that case she might refloat as well especially if the vessel's uh, bow has just touched the bottom and the vessel stern is clear, the rudder and propeller are working, it's a good idea to go astern quickly and uh, protect the rest of the vessel from being grounded. Uh, however, you have to remember that excessive stern movement may result in ship becoming banged up by sand and silt, which means that you may get further stuck into the mud or the seabed in which you have embedded. Uh, this is especially the case if your vessel has gone into uh, the ground or seabed by the stern where uh, if you try to give a stern movement to refloat the vessel it may complicate the situation further. So it's a good idea to get an assessment of the seabed or the surroundings before you start using your main engines and propeller and your rudder. Uh, in any case you must try and protect your engines, propeller and rudder uh, because that will be the best way to refloat the vessel if the vessel ever strands or grounds uh, accidentally. Uh, make sure that you display the uh, ground lights and day signals. Uh, if I'm not wrong, they have three red lights in a vertical line to indicate uh, grounding and uh, the day signal as well. Then you have the, uh, you have to inform the engine room to make sure that you change over to high C-suction because if you keep it to low C-suction it's quite possible that you will uh, suck in the mud or the clay or the seabed around you which is not good for the ship's C-suction. It might block the uh, suction and then it will stop working as well. Uh, once you know that you have been grounded it's better to sometimes wait for the next high water uh, because if you have grounded on low water uh, sometimes with the high water coming in and the flooding tide coming in, you will automatically refloat at times or with the help of engines, it's easier to then refloat. Actions to be taken, well, it becomes a dangerous situation if vessel grounds in high water because then you don't have the option of any uh, option of uh, the water level rising further to refloat the vessel. So if your vessel grounds in high water, that means then uh, you are now in uh, trouble in terms of the required water depth and then you might have to use some other means to refloat the vessel. 
if one part of your vessel grounds which leads to a fracture of the ship's hull or damage to the ship's hull or hole in the ship's hull which then you have to then de deal with the hole and the bilging as well and the water flooding in and the ingress of water and you have to deal with that as well because that will also further lead to stability complications uh, make sure that you consider the use of distress signals especially if you are in the vicinity where other ships are passing around uh, you have to inform your owners agents charters underwriters classification society flag states insurers as well and uh, DPA. So basically, you have to inform uh, all the people who are managing your vessel. Uh, lay out ground ground tackles to prevent the vessel to be driven up further and facilitate refloating. So ground tackles are basically a seamanship technique where you use the ship's anchor to not only keep the vessel um, as, uh, in a position in a certain position. It's often used in uh, the beaching of a vessel or intentional grounding of the vessel. But you can also use the ground tackles to heave on the ground tackles and facilitate refloating, especially if uh, you do not have any tugs for assistance. Uh, this is not a simple process. Using of ground tackles is a very complicated process, especially if you do not, uh, if you do not know how to use it. Uh, you need to have good seamanship skills to use the ground tackle. However, uh, if you do not have any other assistance available to you, then that is pretty much the only option left for you. Uh, that will help you in or assist you in the refloating of the vessel especially to get the stern the ship stern into the water if you can get the ship stern into the water uh, that will be good enough for you guys to refloat the vessel and make sure that you take sounding of the tanks to assess the damage and uh, making sure that there's no water ingress coming in or there's no leakage of any fuel oil into the sea no environmental pollution because with grounding, not only a high risk of a ship's hull's damage comes into play, but also you have to be very aware that if there is any kind of environmental damage, if there is any leakage of fuel oil or diesel oil, then uh, the complications uh, arise as well because then your company, your owners have to pay for that environmental damage. And um, this is really frowned upon uh, these days and owners can sustain large losses because of this. If there is any kind of bilging, which is ingress of water or hole in the ship's cell, then make sure that you take pressures, measures against progressive flooding. You may use collision mats to stop the flow. You may use the external portable pumps to pump out the water. Make sure you have to calculate the damage stability condition. Also calculate the GM of the vessel. If there is any list, you have to be very mindful of that as well. And calculate the adverse stability condition that is calculating for the damage stability calculating for the worst case scenario where your GM may become a reduce a lot and you have to think about all that depending on the compartment which has got built and what pro protection you have against the ingress uh, you may also consider shifting of weights or ballast to refloat the vessel or lessen the adverse effect so sometimes uh, if a ship's list develops or if uh, uh, to reduce the draft of the vessel or to adjust the trim of the vessel to bring the ship's stern into the water, you have the options of shifting cargo and ballast. Of course, ballast should be your first option because it is much easier to manage it, provided you can uh, use your ship's pumps and everything is in right order. Shifting of cargo is not an easy job. Uh, we say it in theory, but you need ship's cranes, you need trained crew, and you also have to be very mindful of what happens to the center of gravity of the ship once you start shifting the cargo. Uh, so easier said than done but always keep ballast as the first option and only then in the extreme case you should be using the cargo make sure that you keep an eye on the tidal range the tidal predictions the time and, and nature of high water and the range and nature of the bottom uh, what time is high water what is the maximum depth of water that you can get uh, this becomes a, a bit of a uh, complicated exercises especially if your ship has grounded on high water then you don't have much uh, to play around with then make sure you check the draft of the vessel and calculate the buoyancy lost especially because as soon as the vessel touches the bottom it starts to act like a dry dock so as soon as there's a dry dock uh, part of the weight of the vessel is taken by the seabed and then an equal and opposite thrust acts on the uh, ship so it has to be compensated by an increase of buoyancy uh, so these are all calculations are involved in the stability of the vessel of course but uh, i won't go too deep into that um, but uh, you have to keep an eye on the draft of the vessel and make sure that uh, due to ingress of water uh, has there any buoyancy of the ship being lost because that will also have an effect on the overall uh, stability of the vessel 
if you can then uh, you should definitely call for assistance from the tugs especially if you are in the port areas you are in uh, port limits or you have uh, nearby ports uh, try to call for tugs because tugs are the most useful way to refloat the vessel um, to, so the tugs can not only scour the mud around the tugs and tow the ship out and they will pull the ship at perpendicular to its fore and aft like in order to free it from the bank up effect so basically if they can get your ship turned into the water and helps you to uh, refloat the vessel easily without any damage they can also assess the seabed around and to see whether um, in what way uh, the ship can be pulled out with minimum damage to the and ship's bottom uh, finally make sure that uh, if any salvage operation has been taking place uh, the contracts and the contractual agreement is in place and it is as per the Lloyd's salvage agreement because that pretty much is a standardized form which contains uh, terms that protects the ship owner as well as the salvage uh, person who has come for the salvage. Uh, the tugs pull should be subject to the sea and swell conditions as well as a continuous change of tow line. Make sure you keep the watertight doors closed so to prevent any kind of ingress of water into the ship. Uh, like I said before, in case of any environmental pollution, make sure that you take measures to control the same. Make sure that you uh, do not, if even if the leak has happened and the and, uh, fuel oil has leaked, try to prevent it, try to stop it, try to prevent it from spreading out to keep it the damage to a minimum. Swing out and make the live boats ready. If you feel there is any danger to the vessel and the ship's crew must abandon the ship, then of course ship's uh, safety and uh, safety of life comes first and uh, you must abandon the ship uh, with the live boat and life raft if, if it uh, becomes dangerous for uh, the ship's crew to stay on the ship. Finally, you may also uh, use the live boat to survey the area around the ship or to determine the best possible way to refloat. Also gives you a good idea about the seabed the kind of seabed it is and what angle the sh ship should be coming out and uh, what kind of damage the ship has sustained. So these are all good actions. If you can, then uh, it's a good idea for you to just uh, go down and uh, if it is safe to do so, sometimes you may also use the live boat. All right, so I think I've pretty much covered uh, what has to be covered. Of course, if you're asked such a question in the exam, you may also refer to the ISM checklist. You have your company's policies, procedures, but uh, simply stating that you will refer to the ISM checklist is not a good enough answer. You also have to talk about the action points which are included in the ISM checklist if the ship grounds or uh, gets stranded accidentally. So let me know what you thought about this video and um, all the best with your study guys. Bye for now.